Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. If you're familiar with MTG Goldfish, run by Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, then you know that he does a Fishbowl Thursday, that's where you can submit your own brews, and if it happens to be taken, then he will mega deck tech for it, possibly even play with it on the website, on the channel. And that's what I'm actually going for. This is the deck that I've been playing for some time. I've actually even made a deck tech on it, but it was so long ago that it needs a new deck tech. Uh, a card has been banned, new cards have been printed, I need to go back over it. So this is Army of the Dredge for Modern. Now, if you're familiar at all with Magic, you know that making a lot of mana tends to be pretty good, and Crypt of Agadim happens to be one of a few cards in Modern that can make more than two mana on its own, few lands. So you have Nick the Shrine of Nyx and you have Crypt of Agadim. Now Crypt is not legendary, so it has the potential to make even more, potentially. And, potentially, <laughs> I'll say potentially a few more times. Uh, yeah, this is this is pretty good. Now it does require some setup because it makes black mana for each black creature in your graveyard. As you can imagine, we're going to have to have a lot of black creatures in the yard. This is where everything on this row comes in. You'll notice they're all black. Now mono black, all black though. It's a dredge deck, so we're going to be running four stinkweed imps thanks to dredge five. Four Golgari Grave or Golgari Thug, <laughs> Dredge Four. By the way, Rip Golgari Grave Troll. That's that's banned. We can't run that anymore. And it's not black for Crypt of Agadim anyway, which was huge because it meant that there was never really much of an opportunity cost to dredge Golgari Grave Troll. You kept the same number of black creatures, possibly even went up, and you had a huge threat in your hand. Sadly, we can't do that anymore because it's banned again. So Shambling Shell, Dredge Three. And it's a 3-1, and you can sack it to put a counter on a uh, creature. This actually occasionally matters, because it gives us a fair creature if we happen to not have a graveyard anymore. It's a 3-1 that can just win the game on its own. And it lets our Necroplasm skip a step. So Necroplasm is just one of it. It's one of our bullets. When you're drawing, drawing, five cards per turn, four cards per turn, or even more, you can run a lot of bullets more readily. So this one, basically, long story very short, lets us blow up tokens and it lets us go up along the CMC scale. So, first time it comes out, at end of turn destroy each creature with converted mana cost equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on it, it has zero, it blows up all the zero CMCs, so it blows up lingering souls tokens, etc. At the beginning of your upkeep, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Now, that does mean that when it hits three, it's going to end up blowing itself up, which is normally fine. You can dredge it back, keep doing this on and on and on. Shambling Shell will actually let it skip past three if you sack it, and you can have a creature that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, next, because we want to fill up the yard really quickly, we have Street Wraith, which, yes, counts for a black creature for Crypt, but also... Cycling <laughs> seems pretty good in what we're doing. Now, we want to keep ourselves alive, and that's where cards like Vengeful Pharaoh come in. Now, Vengeful Pharaoh, whenever a creature deals combat damage to us or a planeswalker we control, which is to say us, it, if it's in my graveyard, yeah, we get to destroy that attacking creature, then put it on top. Then, of course, we dredge it right back, and we get to do this over and over and over again. There are two of them. There could even be more, actually. It's that good of a card. It doesn't keep the damage from hitting us, but it makes them swing all out at us, or they're going to lose their creatures. Haunted Dead doesn't kill the creatures, but it stalls the game for us for a bit by putting out two chump blockers, and it gives us a discard outlet in the graveyard. So, discard two cards, return it from... From your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped, sadly tapped, but it makes a 1 1 that isn't tapped, and then it itself is a 2 2. And then 1 1 flies. So it gives us something that we can do uh, to clog up the board a little bit. Phantasmagorian is a fantastic card. Manalus Dredge works because this is a card. It's one of the big reasons. So we don't care about the first bit. We're not going to be casting it, basically, ever. What we do care about is that if it's in the yard, we can discard three cards to return it from our graveyard to our hand, but if we happen to have six or more cards in our hand, we can actually hold priority and do it again, discard three more cards, and bring it back to our hand. So we can get, potentially, our whole hand into the yard if we need to, and that helps because as you keep dredging, you might find that your hand has way too many dredge cards in it. You can use Haunted Dead, Phantasmagorian, we're going to get to some other options that will help you to get your hand uh, empty a little bit. Uh, speaking of, so, okay. Not a lot of turn one plays in this deck, but Faithless Looting, if you're going to have one in a dredge deck, that's the one. Let's you draw two, discard two, and flashback matters a lot in this deck. Cathartic Reunion is one of the new cards that's come up since this first had its deck tech made. And as you can imagine, it's pretty good. So much better than what I had been running, which is Dangerous Wager. <laughs> discard two, draw three cards, seems pretty good. Life from the Loam is really what makes this deck work. So if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, you have a Crypt of Agadim, 
what happens if you don't have cryptovagadame? And the answer is you keep dredging until you find life from the loam, cast life from the loam, get back your cryptovagadame. So it's not, oh, I didn't open crypt, I guess I can't play the game. It's you keep going and going and going, and you turn into a life from the loam deck if you're familiar with that in Legacy. Next, payoff cards. <laughs> payoff cards. Once you're making 10 or more mana, you can cast Army of the Damned, either from your hand for 8 or from your graveyard for 7, or for, excuse me, for 7 and Black Book Packs for 10. And it makes 13 two twos. Now, granted, the zombies come in tapped, and that's a little bit unfortunate, but if you can untap with them, you're probably winning the game. However, because they do come in tapped, you need something to keep you alive when you can't kill them on that turn, or when you can't stay alive for a turn, and that's where spider spawning comes in. Because 5 from the hand, 7 from the yard, it makes a 1-2 green spider with reach for each creature in your yard. And, again, 20 creatures. Seems alright. Clogs up the board a bit, deals with token de lingering souls, deals with empty lords, yada yada yada. Conflagrate is another discard outlet for my hand, and it clears the board a little bit. It gives us sort of a semi-wrath that fills up our yard once again, and Dark Blast for recursive removal for cards like Snapcaster Mage, and a few others deals with Infect, for instance, but Snapcaster Mage in this Jace era that we're, that we're in. And of course, you can actually do minus two, minus two by playing it in the upkeep, dredging it, and then playing it again. Alright, so that's and then for lands, okay, so our most important colors are green and red, so four Grove of the Burn Willows because it's an untapped source for both of them, we don't care about giving them life. We're hitting them for 26, so giving them one life, not that big a deal. Copperland Gorge, usually it's fine, it's fine. It's a fast land, and whatever, hopefully by turn four we have other options. Verdant Catacombs, we use this one specifically because it gets all of our shock lands and it gets our two basics. We don't run a basic mountain in this deck, we do run a basic forest and a basic swamp. So, Jun shock lands, fair enough. We're running, again, a forest and swamp because these are the two that we need if a blood moon comes down. All of ours are mountains anyway in the face of Blood Moon, so not that big a deal there. Sheltered Thicket is interesting because you can life from the loam it back to your hand and then cycle and replace that cycle with a dredge and it gives you an engine for dredging over and over and over and over again. And it happens to be fetchable as well. And then Ghost Quarter because we don't do anything else against Tron. Now again, you are drawing so many cards in this deck that Ghost Quarter can actually be, be found relatively reasonably well. So given that, eventually you life from the loam it back and you can actually just crucible lock people with Ghost Quarter Life from the Loam. Eventually they run out of basics and Ghost Quarter just becomes a better, uh, just becomes strip mine in modern and that's pretty good. Now for this sideboard you may notice something that this deck lacks. It is fragile to combo decks because all we can do against them is try to outrace them. Try to. And in modern we're probably not going to to be honest. We are an, a redundant deck but Mm, we're not that fast. So what we're doing against combo decks is we're having four Raven's Crime. This is a target player discards a card. You don't get to make them choose, but you're going to be doing it over and over again thanks to Retrace, which lets you cast again from your yard by discarding a land card. And hey, Life from the Loam lets us get a bunch of lands back. Once we make a bunch of black mana off of Crypt of Agadine, we can do this over and over and over again, and that's pretty good. Next we have... Collective Brutality, which helps to get an instant or sorcery out of their hand, gives us some other utility, escalate to get cards from your hand into the yard, and every single mode is good against burn, so that's an easy four of against burn, four in. Now, we also worry about fast decks that can outrace us. One of those is Affinity, and so we run four Ancient Grudge. Really good in the deck, obviously we're going to be putting a lot of cards into our graveyard, so the flashback green is great, and it also gives us something to do against Lantern Control, which is a tough match for us, and we have other stuff for that. But in addition, Burn pretty much can't beat Gnaw to the Bone. They pretty much cannot. You gain two life for each creature card in your graveyard. Translation, you can gain up to 40 life. That's, that's pretty good <laughs> for three mana. And if you happen to do it from your hand as well, even more. Bajuka Bog, in a similar way to Ghost Quarter, because we're draw drawing so many cards, we can find it relatively reasonably well, and this is something that lets us hit our opponent's graveyard, and just our opponent's graveyard. Unfortunately, we need to keep our own, and so there are lots of effects that we'd like to run, but we can't. Now, lastly, I have Cut to Ribbons, which is interesting. So, Cut, if it's in your hand, gives you another removal spell against a lot of decks. Ribbons Aftermath. This actually is here for one match, and that's Lantern Control. See, if you happen to get it in your yard, eventually you can get to the point where, you know, often they're, they're wanting to give you lands because lands are not very impactful spells, generally. But, if Ribbons is in your yard, each opponent, so it gets past Witchbane Orb, loses X life. So you'll eventually make enough mana that you can just 
drain, not drain, but cause them to lose enough life that they're out of the game. So that's where Cut to Ribbons comes in. And I'm sure there are some other matchups, but that's the big one. Because that's a really tough match for us to win against. They have potentially get Graft Digger's Cage as soon as game one with Whirr. Whew, that can be tough. In Staring Bridge is hard for us to beat. So this lets us beat In Staring Bridge. And that's Army of the Dredged. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Stop for an olive. Check it out, please. All right, I'll talk to you later, YouTube. Bye-bye.